get ready for a very special Mercury retrograde that starts on the 29th of December until the 19th of January. Special, why? Because he is elementally in Earth for all of his retrogrades in 2023, not leaving the signs of Capricorn Taurus and Virgo, but staying within them, giving him a good six months, goodness gracious, in Earth. This makes a year for you, for me, for the world, very specifically rare, hasn't happened since 15, 2015, 16. I'll talk about that cycle for your sky, but now it's back. Now, this could be really a good turning point for money, prosperity, health, purpose, career, ambition, um, material realm stuff for each of us, but we have to get there through the gauntlet of his retrogradation, which is close to earth, super magical, super synchronistic, but also very intense energy. Mercury is close to us when he's retrograde, he's between the sun and the earth, and he's moving slowly. So we're going to talk about how this impacts you and your sign. This is not going to be a mundane uh, about the world in general type of thing. Um, this I'll save that for my other video that I'm doing. I have done, I recorded with Gary Caton, uh, the expert on the Mercury elemental air and earth years. So stay tuned for that. It'll be out within days of this video. That's a deep dive. So let's go ahead and talk about what happened last time. This was a situation where Mercury was basically spending a long time in the earth elements. And I'm going to give you me as an example. And I know a lot of you won't be able to go back and remember. Oh, by the way, if you're new to my channel, my name is Lori Lothian. I'm a whole sign house, um, tropical Western astrologer, not sidereal. I use minor asteroids. I'm an asteroid junkie. I I I'm into predictive astrology. I'm not particularly woo. And if you're new here, please hit the like button subscribe check my description box below i have a 2023 all signs video that's doing really well i'm recording on december 23rd go check it out find out what's up for your sign a good 10 minutes per sign but if you want to go a lot deeper and learn about your rising sign most accurate sun and moon secondarily why not buy my all signs bundle it's pretty affordable santa 25 is a special code just for youtube viewers and it's 25 percent off reducing 12 hours of video footage content for each sign to only $35, which is crazy cheap, or just buy your a la carte. Okay, enough promotion. Let's go to the sky. But go back to 2016. What were you doing? Okay, it actually started with a Mercury retrograde in Capricorn in December of 2015. And then again, a retrograde in the um, dates I got here in uh, May of 2016. And in the sign of Taurus, and then in September of 2016, in the sign of Virgo. You'll notice that these are also the times when the sun is near those signs, right? So, because Mercury's hugging the sun, he never gets more than 45 degrees away from the sun. Therefore, this is also Virgo season, this is like Taurus season, and this is Capricorn season, when he's retrograding in the element totality, not leaving the bounds of the element. So it's a full on elemental earth year in 23. But I gave you the dates for the past, right? So we're going to go to the future in a minute. I really want you to think about what you were doing in those time frames. I'll give you me as an example. I'm an Aquarius rising. And so when Mercury went retrograde in Capricorn, my 12th house, that December, the house of hospitals and illness, my father of my children went into a malaria coma and was in a coma for weeks. And it began with a mercury retrograde in Capricorn. It also was a very stressful time in my life regarding my marriage for many reasons, including the daily trips to the hospital to see my ex-husband, father, my children. And another problem I had with a spiritual teacher at the time, 12th house is connected to spiritual teachers. So it was really stressful, actually, that particular version of it. Um, it doesn't always have to be that. So don't all Aquarius rising fret for this year's version. But then I'm going to tell you, let's keep going through the story of this, right? Because then in May of 2016, when he was going through my Taurus fourth house of property home, the nest, my residence where I live with then my husband, my husband and I decided that we would separate in, in a very um, namaste way. We, we had to, you know, cut, cut ties. It was time to end our eight-year relationship and five-year marriage. So that occurred when Mercury was retrograding, going back over something to do with where I live. Why does it have to do with why I live, even though I'm talking about ma my marriage? Because Mercury was squaring my seventh house of marriage as you retrograded and spent two months in my fourth house. <laughs> and, and in order to separate out, I needed to move into another property, which I did. And so keep the, your eye on this energetic ball. And then in December, uh, and then in September of 2016, Mercury and his elevator elemental earth year was in my eighth house of joint resources, other people's money, 
Um, and that was actually me moving into the new place. Um, and it was sextiling the house of leases. And it was me consolidating my financial uh, arrangements and agreements with shared resources with my husband. Literally things like, did we pay the pool? Who pays the pool bill? Because uh, he had a house with a pool. We were still splitting that. And how to transfer accounts over. And I had to get insurance for the house, you know, new tenants insurance because I was renting. So it was all about eight house things in September. I moved in in October. Insurance, leases, tenancy, uh, fixing the resources with my ex-husband, you know, making sure we squared away on shared content between us that we were both financially responsible for. All right. So done with me. I want you to try to remember those times in your life, December, May, and September of 2015, 16, because now it is back. <laughs> By the way, are you listening in the live premiere? Uh, hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow. Without your like buttons and subscribes, my channel doesn't grow. It doesn't grow. The algorithm doesn't send me out into YouTube land for more people to find me, and then the channel will sink, okay? So I'm really saying it matters to my career, but more matters to my livelihood. And okay, so next, um, this time around, and it's going to go into really a good deep two hour and 24 minute deep dive for each sign on what the elemental year, air year will be like globally with Gary Caton. I recorded that. I just have to do a little intro a video part of it and then splice it and it'll be out soon. I hope you'll enjoy that. That will be good for watching all the way through 2023. But anyway, but this year, the re retrogradations within the bounds of Earth are just, okay, so we got Mercury December 6th to February 11th, hello, in the sign of Capricorn, but the retrograde is coming in December 29th um, to January uh, 19th, okay, so there's your window, and then in the summertime, or the spring season, I should say, April 3rd to June 11th, that's a long time, the Mercury is in Taurus, but he will retrograde from April 21st to May 14th, and then in the summertime, He's in Virgo from the end of July to October 5th, and he retrogrades in mid-August, um, August 23rd to September 15th. And I'll be doing separate videos for all of those, okay? This retrograde is kind of fascinating to me because he's going to be um, stationing retrograde at 24 degrees, and he's conjunct the asteroid Lucifer. And I really think that Lucifer is a light bringer. Lucifer is like um, the one who is known as the brightest, shiniest, most beautiful angel of all. And yes, he had pride and he fell according to the war in heaven stories. But I just want you to consider that there is this element of a divine being that's bright and shiny. There's an angelic energy that fell from pride and arrogance and a war in heaven, you know, the whole drill, right? Um, so it's kind of blurry. My, I realized my camera and that's just low light, guys. I apologize. I can't fix it. I just, ugh. it's because I'm in Vancouver. I'm recording at two in the afternoon and it gets dark in like an hour and a half. It's the darkest day of the year, like the less light you have almost, it's the 23rd. Um, okay, so continuing the narrative. <laughs> um, each sign will experience this differently. So I'm gonna go through it as best I can to say how this may impact you. But certainly, no matter what your sign, rising sun and moon with rising most accurate, cast your rising, cast your chart and whole sign houses, check my description box for a free tutorial on how to do that. Um, so you can just have your rising sign handy for these videos. But that said, you know, anyone with any planetary positions in Capricorn 24 degrees, okay, or eight degrees of Cap when he turns around on the 19th of January, will have a special connection to this retrograde, independent of your sun, moon, and rising sign, all right? So keep that in mind, you know you best, and you would even splay that out to the cardinal signs, anything near 24 Aries, Libra, Cancer, or Capricorn, planetary body, you're going to get a direct angular hit from this retrograde as, as he stations to go retrograde. So the, the retrograde period will be meaningful. Uh, one last thing, yes, we know travel delays, you know, shadow mercury retrograde, Canada's in a deep freeze happening in the US. A lot of holiday travel plans have been de derailed. We also have the quality of, you know, the markets, the stock markets are part of Mercury's wheelhouse being really destabilized with inflation and bad news and FDX collapsing. And now we're going to go into a Mercury retrograde on the 29th. It could actually pull the markets further back or change of direction in the market. So if they're up, they'll go down. If they're down, they'll go up. Who knows? We'll watch and see. Uh, technically, most times a Mercury retrograde in Capricorn will take the markets backwards, not forward. But, th but in your own life, right, this is a retrograde that can serve you. You're going to find that maybe you can touch base with synchronicity more, uh, magic, intuition, um, get dream messages from Mercury. He's known as that trickster, but he's also the dream messenger. 
And he's also the one who can give you the messages you need uh, through synchronicity, meaningful coincidences, unlikely events, serendipitous circumstances. I always journal a lot during Mercury retrograde. I pay attention to my dreams during Mercury retrograde as he's hugging close to earth between the sun and the earth, moving very slow. And also you can go fast during Mercury retrograde. It's the last time in do not like launch a major project, leap forward. You can finish up old projects and things you were up to before. Sure, go back and fine tune and, and tool it up, but don't like, oh, gangbusters, uh, came, say, conquered, vini, vini, vici, you know, in a warrior mode to get a lot of stuff done. And take time out, take time down, be more sensitive to, you know, the magic around you and, and, and the simple things in life sometimes. I think Mercury retrogrades are a chance to slow down. What is that called? Slow living, slow down. Take some time to notice what's really going on. Take your little blinders off. We do this thing where the reason people go on pilgrimages, like off to you know Mecca or off to you know the, the Compostello and all those other things, is because or to ashrams. But anyway, as soon as you get away from your everyday life and you're not seeing the same kitchen, the same people, the same car, the same streets, the same office, the same whatever, same old, same old, you're opening up to a new level of perception. You're going to get out of the rope where you take everything around you for granted. It's almost like you see it every day and you don't see anything. And you're going to open up to something new. And that's why synchronicity and serendipity go over the rails when we're traveling or when we're on a purposeful pilgrimage where we get signs and omens and portents. <laughs> so take this time to make it that for you, even if you don't go away. Set the intention. Dream journal, omens, portents, etc. Now we're going to talk about each sign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the house that Mercury's retrograding in. But I'm going to talk about the two houses that he rules in your chart based on your rising sign you can sub subdivide that into sun and moon you can listen for that as well um we are using whole sign houses as astrologers when we give you these delineations don't tell me about your placidus intercepted house <laughs> or whatever where you've got you know or in, in, don't tell me we're wrong whole sign houses is the original tradition go ahead and cast your chart in and get and wake up to who you really are but the other thing about it yeah Ms. Zalit, is that your Placidus houses are not what we're talking about or your Coke and Campanus. So when I go, you know, Aries, Sun, Moon and Rising, I'm pretending all of Aries is the first house, all of Taurus is the second house, all of Gemini is your third house. OK, and that's what all astrologers are doing. All astrologers are doing here. That's how it works. All right. Whew. Now, it's going to be getting dark. I will try to continually find light sources to put in front of me so that I'm not talking to you from the dark, <laughs> but just know that I'm doing my best not to end up there. So we're going to go at with a, a pithy pace, but informative, I hope, uh, how you can use this actually to your best advantage. So we're starting with the Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign people because it is the first sign of the Zodiac. And when we start there and you jump into the YouTube premiere and don't forget to hit my like if you're in the live with me and I'm watching and we're chatting together then they know that they don't have to you know if I start with Pisces they think we're finishing all right Aries Aries sun moon and rising sign people uh first of all Mercury and Capricorn is in your 10th house this is a career space outward uh, actions in the world that people recognize you for it doesn't have to be nine to five either like if you're a philanthropist or you're working you know a helping profession or you you know you raise your children or you're a student that's your visible actions of in the world your ambitions your sense of success are in that 10th house so this is a place where mercury is going backward but he's going backward in a special way he hasn't gone backward with this intensity and this long duration in Capricorn, as I said in the intro that I hope you listen to, since December of 2015. And if you go back to December of 2015, you're going to get a really strong sense of what the heck that was about. And in that way, and I'm going to double check that because I just had a thought, hope I got the dates right. Hang on. Yes, it is December of 2015. Oh, I think my brain. And um, so what were you doing in December 2015, maybe into January even because of his retrograde crossing the, the New Year's Eve mark back then. And so what was going on? Like I had told you I'm a terrible coma story. I'm an Aquarius rising because this was in the house of hospitals, but this is your career, your purpose, your ambition, your visible success in the world, your reputation, what was ha happening back then that was really important. And now it's back for a renovation revision. As I said, in the title of this video, revised wealth, material prosperity, uh, you know, goals or something. I'm going to name it something like that. And you're powering up with a new story, a new direction for the next six years of how you're going to use this energy of a Mercury and an elemental Earth here, big Earth changes for you ahead. Um, now, he's an influential God of your 
other houses, which is your third house of siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, trips, and travel. And he also rules your house of health, sickness, uh, workaday routines, um, tenancy, and pets. And therefore, this time around, like back in December of 2000 and 2015, um, you might have made changes there regarding things to do with pets, to do with tenancies, to do with uh, trips and travel and siblings and skills-based learning. I mean, I have an Aries sun and moon and because that was the beginning of separating from my husband in the elemental earth year that followed, we had to talk about how to divide the pet responsibilities up between us. And I had to look at tenancies by finding a new place to live. And yes, I didn't do that in December. All right. I did that later on in the elemental earth year, but the pitch pipe note here is that this entire elemental earth year will activate pets, tenancies, um, workaday routines, health. And a lot of this for you right now, more, more exactly may have to do with revising some of your routines around your wellness, because he's going to be activating that six house from a trine. So like me, I'll probably do another, you know, dry January or 40 day, no wine cleanse kind of thing. Maybe you'll do something similar. Maybe you'll find yourself going back over old ground uh, or revising a lease or tenancy agreement that you're in charge of or that you're the tenant of, that kind of stuff. And maybe people, co-workers and office space people are somehow right there in your face, maybe coming back even from the past, who knows, but that, that there's a strong activation of the sixth house. And slightly the third house, Mercury can't see it, so I'm not gonna go there. He's in a version from the 10th. I really think it's a sixth house narrative. Um, so stay tuned for that and know that this is the beginning of a renovation that lasts all through 23 as your finances and work and career path begin to renovate, change, and revise in the elemental earth year of 2023. Wait for that Gary Caton video. I think you'll enjoy it. More details to come. And I did say that I was not going to spend too much time in each sign, right? So I want to get this done before it's pitch black here. But you're getting the gist, right? Anything else I could say about that? Not really. Well, you know, you've got an ongoing tr um, trine from the North Node Uranus right now in your second house of earnings with Mercury retrograding your 10th. Certainly, this could be a bolt or jolt or an increase in earnings for you as well. Aries, all of a sudden out of the blue, after he goes direct, maybe on uh, January the 19th, you might find yourself accelerating after revising, going back over, really thinking about a new earning strategy. And I'm talking about that because Taurus second house of earnings and possessions is invited into the narrative by trine from Mercury and Capricorn in your natal 10th house. Now to continue, I can't believe it's still 2022. I actually think it's 2023. Are you watching in the premiere and you forgot that I have a like button? Then if you hit it, I'll be forever grateful. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. You've been going through to hell in a handbasket back and forth. Uranus, north node, eclipses in your sign. January of 22 to July 23. It's a pretty intense time, but go back to 2015, December, and then also the whole year of 2016. Elemental Earth is back for a replay six years later. What changes are you going to make in your eight, ninth house of higher education, God, truth, wisdom, foreign lands, travel, court cases, and legal matters that required a judge, things to do with book publishing, things to do with the father. So my daughter's a Taurus son, and then her dad was in a coma back then. So what kind of changes could be going on with her father, father figure stories? Um, there is a lot going on in Capricorn right now. You have a stellium up there with Hygieia, the sun, and Mercury, and Venus, and Pluto. I'm doing a special Venus-Pluto video. So you're focused a lot on the ninth house. Some of you, that's higher education. Some of you, that could be travels to foreign lands, or maybe uh, focused on your, a father figure. All of that might be really intensely present for you uh, during the month of December 6th to January, February 11th, when Mercury is still up there, but it's a retrograde where he's going to revise something. So consider what re revisions in your faith, what you believe in, maybe your course load, maybe your relationship with your father, maybe things to do with a book that you've been working on. It's, and the editor's shooting back a manuscript for revision, all kinds of things like that could be very literal. 
Now we're going to mention that he's in charge of two houses in your chart. He's in charge of your second house of possessions and earn earnings, and he's in charge of your Virgo fifth house of romantic love. For all of these videos, I'm more or less going to focus on the one that he can see. An aversion means that he's in an conjunct, 150 degrees away. So while he's traveling through your ninth house, he doesn't see your second house. So I don't think it's going to be that important, but he does quite see and flow towards your fifth house of pregnancy, children, romance, um, joy, play, pleasure. I mean, certainly from the ninth house, this could kickstart a trip for some of you that's going to be very enjoyable that may be involving romance and just pleasure as well, especially to a foreign land. If you don't take a trip by February 11th, you're at least planning that trip, you know, getting all the things lined up to make that journey. And with the fifth house, your communications with your children is activated because Mercury is trying to bring flow toward the fifth house. So some real good communication. And if you are old enough to have grandchildren, the ninth house can be the house of your grandchildren. And you may be hearing from them as well, but also experiencing some positive lucky news around their lives or some your or maybe a chance to connect with them in a very positive way. And with the retrograde, maybe because you haven't seen them for a while, things from the past has to come back to be addressed. Same with legal cases. If you have a legal matter outstanding, this could go back to readdress some of the fine tuning in the court documents or the lawyer says, we need to go back and look at this again. And then you can go forward after that. Um, and, you know, there's an ongoing flow of energy of mercury in your night towards your body, towards your identity. So while he's here, you know, December 6th to February 11th, it's actually quite lovely for you. And it, it, it's, he's kind of supporting you. He's trying to bring you what you need from the house of God and epiphanies and spirituality. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of almost like a bomb for the whole, whole ordeal of having eclipses with Uranus and North Node stuff going on in the house of you. Just watch any of my eclipse videos then in my playlist, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. You guys are being reinvented and that doesn't stop until 2026, but the worst of it will be over by July of next year. Check out my all signs 2022 video. I'll put it in the description box, but also get my bundle and or your own sign. So Gemini, sun, moon and rising, and I'm requiring everyone to remember what happened in 2016, right? It's the intro because this happened to be December of 16 that we had an elemental Earth year kicking off, Mercury and Capricorn, I mean, sorry, December 2015, and then in May and September of 2016, very elemental Earth is back at six years later, and we're doing a whole 23 elemental Earth year, where Mercury spends six months in Earth, because he's retrograding in Earth and stays in Earth, doesn't slide into another sign. So Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising people, especially Rising. Right now, this Capricorn zone is being activated by retrograde and the retrograde on the 29th of December through to January the 19th could open up some investigation, research, communication, um, buying and selling mercantile, mercantile markets in your eighth house of money that belongs to other people. This is money from a spouse, a business partner, money from a bank, money from investments in the stock market because it doesn't belong to you. You're investing in a company and other person's resources and you're teaming up with them, hypothetically. Money that it comes to inheritances, especially with a retrograde. Was there unfinished business with an inheritance that could be coming back? What was going on in December of 16 into January? Maybe it'll give you refreshing your memory. Um, during this transit, you could have dead people talking to you, communications from the house of the dead with Mercury retrograde. Great Aunt Susie is back in touch after she had passed away two years ago. Um, you might also find yourself involved in learning things to do with tarot, occult mysteries, astrology, supernatural, magical, and mystical stuff. This is a moksha house. Spiritual awakening can happen here. Um, you may be getting in touch with your deep inner resources, your guides, your spirit guides. These sorts of things can happen. But of course, history tells a tale. So maybe you'll get some messages if you go back to look at 2015, December into January of 2016 to get a refresh button. And he is Mercury, the Lord, the Lord of two houses in your chart. The first house of you as a Gemini rising, he's your chart ruler or your helmsman. Okay, he's an important planet for you. You should always pay attention to him. Certainly with the synchronicities he can dredge up during a retrograde, you should be good to go. He could be bringing you some synchronicity directly right in your face. But more importantly, he's trying his other house, the, the real estate property house. Um, this is where you live, your domestic private life, land, home, residence, residential stuff. 
uh, things to do with your mom, your family of origin, your childhood, your ancestors. So he's in a trine, it's a flow, but he is retrograding. So childhood thing, memories coming back, childhood themes returning, um, hearing from your mom after you haven't heard from her in a while, uh, maybe the essence of something to do with um, a mortgage or real estate or buying and selling property. But with the retrograde, you don't want to sign a document like, like a legal vow or agreement if you can avoid it, okay? Wait till he's direct or get really good eyeballs on that thing. But you might be going back, like, a, for example, to revise a, a document to refinance your, your property. I don't know who would refinance now. Is your interest rate so high? Um, Again, uh, if there was an inheritance now, you could be going to collect it, but you have to go back through some paperwork first. Now, all systems go when he goes direct January the 19th. Um, you're probably aware of some of these things because it started when he entered there on December the 6th. So it's not a fresh story. It's just the retrograde will be where you're digging in, slowing down, going backward, looking at it a little bit differently, maybe changing your mind about a financial and real estate situation. Okay. Um, and, you know, he's been experiencing you. There's that trine energy from your 12th house, from the North Node, Mercury, uh, North Node, Uranus. There could be some backroom, unexpected backroom negotiations and deals that are quite exciting that you're doing and putting in place regarding property, land, real estate, inheritance, investment money, and stock market money. This could definitely be insider trading or a stock tip. Lastly, Mercury reveals secrets when he's in the eighth house because it's a house of secrets. And so you may have secrets revealed during the retrograde, uh, even the direct motion, but certainly in the retrograde, uh, things, secrets from the past that you didn't know held by your family of origin or your spouse could be coming out into the ethers or business partner as well. If it gets much darker, I will figure out another light source. Um, yeah, but hang in there with me, guys. That dog needs a W-A-L-K pretty soon as well. I'm just dog sitting that dog. I'm uh, moving into my new place soon in January. Um, but I love this home. My best friend Sylvia's home is such a beautiful home. And I have to take care of her dog when she's in Hawaii. So that's a little bit about my life. Um, cancer, sun, moon, and rising sign people especially rising sign is most accurate. I always say this and people ask me all the time in the comments. I'm like, no, it's your rising sign is the most accurate. I mean, the sun can be your dad and moon can be your mom. You know, it's like dudes. Okay. So you're having a retrograde in the marriage house. And now you've also had Pluto going through your marriage house since 2008, transforming, revolutionizing and destabilizing even your marriage. So let's say it this way. I doubt your marriage has been simply a, you know, gallivant of joy and ease if you have a marriage or business partner since uh, 2008, there's been a lot of intensity looking for transformation, looking for shifts that are profound, that are going to revolutionize and dramatically change the marriage for the best. So keep that in mind, cancer rising. You don't, you're not married, that's fine. This is your business partners and it's your clients and audience and other, and that's been under massive change as well. Now, basically this retrograde back in 2015, in December or into early January is the last time you had a whole elemental earth energy in the seventh where he doesn't leave that part of your sky while he retrogrades. So what was going on back then in your primary significant relationships? Because things or clients, audience or business partners that could be coming back. And, you know, similarities will happen in 23 to what happened in your life in 2016, when Mercury also went through all the other earth signs and stayed within them for two months. And basically, your, your Mercury is the govern, governor or the ruler of your 12th house and your third house. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on the 12th, just because he can't see it from your seventh. So, but he can see it, your third house very well. And he's flowing to it by looking back over his shoulder, because he's already been there in Virgo. And he's glancing back at your third house of siblings aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, skills-based learning and teaching, travel to local or more close to home travel, uh, vehicles of travel, trains, planes, and automobiles sometimes. And th the idea of what it is you're doing in your neighborhood, you know, the hood you're living in uh, and childhood friends as well can be here. Now, 
this part of your sky, and if you're really young in high school or uh, elementary school, this is the house of elementary and high school. So this part of your chart is getting a lot of sort of flow ease and grace from this retrogradation in your seventh. So a thing could be a, a desire to go back and travel somewhere that you've been before with your, your partner or your, your spouse. Um, it could be opening up a travel plan here. It could be uh, wanting to learn something that you've learned before from a particular teacher. Right, because you have seventh house energies of significant people, you're going to go back and study with a former teacher because a teacher can be a significant other. And um, you may also want to go back over some connections with your siblings and some communication. And if it's retrograde, you might be communicating about a topic that you've already discussed, but now you have to go back and deepen the understanding between you or even go back and um, change your mind about a direction you're going to go with a sibling. Um, or the sibling is going to go back over some old ground with you, you know, may not be your story. Um, may, now, you know, Mercury is a patron um, protector of travelers. Like he keeps them safe. And he literally could be saying something like travel with some significant person in your life and start the, you know, grind into planning. And I, and, you know, in third house, you know, I'll keep you safe. Now third house is not going off to, you know, Siberia or Bali or something unless you live there. I mean, it's like something either in your continent, like Canada, US travel or within your country, that kind of thing. Or if you're in Europe, within continental Europe, places you could go more frequently, like a hop or flight or a shorter journey. Okay. But it looks like some of you will plan trips as a result of this retrograde, if not actually and take a trip. I'll give you an example. Uh, my sister Nancy's a cancer rising. Our sister Cindy lives in the US. We want to go visit her and we are waiting desperately for the US to let its vaccine passport mandate for can anyone not American coming into their country, the only country left on earth besides maybe Korea, North Korea. It's insane. And that's that the TSA is going to look at that on January the 8th. Now, I have not been vaccinated. I've had COVID. It was no big deal. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, And I have my reasons. And so don't 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 question why it's my health prerogative so if that changes tsa lifts the rule on on the 8th of they're going to reinvent they're going to turn it off or on on i think january 8th the point being then if we get a thumbs up it could be like my sister nancy is going let's plan a trip to see my sister in ohio you know giving you real life examples moving on to the next sign um, so people say i talk fast i'm trying not to i have four planets in aries sextile Aquarius, my, my first house ascendant, which is fire and air and makes me fast, right? So I'm trying to talk slow, especially for people who don't have American language, I'm a Canadian, English as a language, but also, I also don't wanna be here slow and I don't wanna bore you. So it's a fine line between the two things. Like those comments are, I don't know to say to those comments, slow your speed down when you listen. Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. <laughs> I'm in a complaining mood today. Um, Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign, people. Um, Capricorn, where the retrograde earth element is happening, which last happened December, January of 2015-16, is back. It's a beginning of a cycle that's going to take all of 23, where you're focused on the earth parts of your sky. Um, but now we're, we're focused on Capricorn, your sixth house, health, health routines, health uh, protocols, work, work, worker routines, work protocols, the workplace, co-workers, pets, tenancy, mercury retrograding. Maybe an old pet comes back to you. Maybe a colleague or co-worker from the past returns to your life. Maybe there's news, phone calls, and information that are quite important happening in your collegiate workspace. Maybe there's things to do with tenancies because this is signing leases. And now you're getting involved in lease document signings. Wait till he's direct on January 19th to actually sign if you can help it. Um, you may have something to do with a pet and having to go back over something with a pet. Could be a health challenge with a pet. Hygieia is here as well, the goddess of health and healing. And now you have to redo the labs. The mercury goes retrograde. You have to check the numbers again and you have to do a protocol change for your pet. Pluto's still here and Pluto's death. So if you have an aging pet and all of this is going on, I'm not saying this pet's going to do necessarily well. I'm just saying focus on pet to do with research labs, you know, investigation, health, and all that could be going on for some of you who have pets who are Leo rising. Now, the sixth house can also be debt, like, you know, karmic debt, but then like debt, you know, so can the eighth be debt? They can both be debt houses. Now, the sixth house is like, you could be going back to redo debt, Mercury's retrograding. 
uh, to renegotiate a debt, to uh, reduce a debt, to what do you call it? consumer finance consolidation a debt? Something to do with that could happen in the retrograde. And with Hygieia is here, you could heal a debt. You could be moving towards debt healing. <laughs> Who knows? She could heal anything, right? Hygieia, the goddess of hygiene, but also medical and doctors, but also healing. And then Mercury has governance over or rulership over your second house, which is his, his wheelhouse, which is your earnings and possessions. And he does also control your 11th house of eldest sibling and uh, good spirit and good luck. But, you know, we're not going to focus on that. He can't see it properly from the six. He can actually look over his shoulder, though, at your Virgo house, your second house. And for you, Leos, this can really mean a negotiation of something really exciting that's financially prosperous around tenancy, around rentals and real estate, around possessions, um, something to do with work and, and money increase. So a promotion or raise, but through negotiations and going back, going back to an old job that nets you some more money, feeling more prosperous as a result of this end of this retrograde. You know, you know, certainly it could be getting a job from the past. You thought that job was gone forever and now it's back or uh, somebody, a client from the past, no, not, not the client really, but some coast worker space person shows up in your life again and tells you something, news, information, Mercury, and it upgrades your, your earnings and your prosperity, second house monies, okay? Mm. This is a really cool tea, okay? It's, it's like Ashtawanga or something. Anyway, it's some kind of Indian herb. I'm promoting tea here. I should actually get like sponsors for teas, right? Because that's, I'm always wanting to drink a tea and this cup actually matches the background. So Virgo, 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 sun, moon and rising sign. And if you're in the premier, please hit my like button and subscribe. Uh, Mer um, Virgo, Mercury is your Lord. He's a planetary body that's chart ruler. He is the owner of the ascendant. So you pay attention to him just like Gemini's, I hope. When he's retrograde, you get a lot of ju juice from him, a lot of synchronicity, a lot of magic, a lot of really good shit can happen. And so you should really be on it. You should always be watching Mercury. Keep your eye on him. This is important. He's an elemental earth here. And Virgo, you're an earth sign and you haven't had his support like this as a Virgo rising, especially sun and moon secondarily. You haven't had his support like this since way back in December of 2015 through to January of 2016. Um, and then, of course, he was for all of 2016 going through Earth and it's trying to be supportive of your story in your resources and all of that. Now, this is a retrogradation that's happening from your fifth house of pregnancy and romance, children, and, uh, and, and where your joy and inspiration is, and sexuality as well that goes with that romance. When I think back to this time, my daughter, who was only I don't know, 15 at the time or something, I can't remember, but she was pretty young, had her first boyfriend. Okay, so yeah, her first real boyfriend. So this is like the Mercury story was in the fifth house of romance, sexuality, trips, uh, leisure trips and travel, um, pleasure, enjoyment of life. Going back over old ground, now Mercury's retrograding. It's classic lovers from the past or boyfriend, girlfriends from the past come out of the woodwork and suddenly you're hearing from them again. Don't be surprised if that phone call text message thing coming through is an X during the retrograde, which I said in the beginning is the 29th of January to the 19th, 29th of December to the 19th of January. This is also a place where you can be deeply inspired. And with Mercury retrograde, you may be getting messages from the gods here, and he's one of them, about what can actually bring you some play and joy and inspiration and enthusiasm for life. A joke about Virgos is you guys have a Capricorn fifth house. And so, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm serious about having fun. <laughs> or fun looks like organizing and cleaning my closet. Gary and I, Kate and I made a joke about that. You'll be hearing that in the long two and a half hour video when I put it out soon about going into a deep dive about what the trigons are and the elemental earth year, year means for each sign. But in general, I'd say there's a very strong possibility you're going to go backward to go forward around joy. A leisure trip with a romantic partner, a fun journey to get away is very likely during this time for you. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't do that. It doesn't have to be exotic, just get away. And um, the way Mercury operates for you, he does love your body right now. He's looking from the fifth house with joy, play, pleasure, children, romance, independent business enterprise at your physical form. He's, he might be saying, you know, Find your joy spark, be better, help more healthy, have fun with your partner and lover and, and feel more vitalized. It, you know, he's opening up a channel of flow 
even in his retrogression from the fifth house to you. Now your children could have news that's very positive and delights you if you have children because Mercury retrograde and direct, you know, he's here till February 11th is in the house of your children. If you're wanting to get pregnant and be careful if you don't, by the way, okay, <laughs> heads up. Um, Jupiter is sextiling the house of pregnancy. Well, Venus, the sperm and ovum goddess is going through it in December. So long story short, after December 20th, especially you are in a pregnancy zone, a fertility zone. But if you want to have a child and you're a Virgo and you're thinking of getting pregnant or been trying, this is going to open up an opening. But retrograde Mercury could be going back and like trying something again, like especially if you're having fertility issues, right? I do a fertility reading, doing the IVF again, trying something new again, uh, going back over your lab results again to look at your hormone numbers, stuff like that. But I'm really speaking to women here, I think, but you know, men too, with their sperm count. Um, be careful though. I, I will say you could get pregnant in this transit. So if you're a Virgo rising, this is most particularly true. And so do you want a child? Funny enough, I can tell you a funny story. If you do get pregnant, you'll be declaring when the kid's four years old, it is great grandpa or great grandma or it's grandma Sue or whatever, because Jupiter in the house of the dad, which he'll be in until, oh my goodness, May the 16th, he puts a sextile I put a spill on you. He puts a sex, he puts a, a square spell on your fifth house of pregnancy. And I, I've seen, well, it's a long story. I won't get into it, but often if you believe in reincarnation, spirits of your family or of your family ancestral line will try to make an entrance into your life while Jupiter is going through the eighth house. And lastly, could a child of yours get pregnant during this, not just your own self? Yes, of course. So if you're Virgo rising, you may be hearing from a child that voila, there is a baby because Jupiter will go through the house of grandchildren mid-May of 23 to 24. So, and you will recognize that child as once it, the kid's old enough to speak and walk is having characteristics of a deceased ancestor. <laughs> All right, moving onward. Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign. Mercury in Capricorn is in your home, your apartment, your house, your real estate, your property, your mother, the land you live on, your ancestors. As he rest, retrogrades in your fourth house, you're going back over something, a deal around property, renegotiating, legacy wealth, inheritance monies, deal making, deal brokering here as well. You certainly look like you're in for some inheritance You know, later on, mid-May of 20, or trust or living trust, mid-May of 23 to 20. Four. Check my all signs video out. I think I talk about it in the 23 all signs video. And you may be doing a precursor negotiation here with somebody in the family system around what that would look like. Say great grandpa or grandpa is really ill now, or we know he's on the, you know, passing away or whatever. You might be working on the fine tuning with all, you know, family members to work that out so that it's not going to be an ordeal once that person passes, something like that. Um, but, you know, you could renegotiate your lease, your terms of your property. You could be looking at buying or selling property as a Libra rising. It's okay to buy or sell. Just try not to sign any definitive documents until January 19th, you know, because December 29th to the 19th of January, the retrogradation can really mean you have to go back and redo the deal. Like there's going to be something that you put into motion and then it has to turn around and be done again. It, it could just be a pain in the ass, right? As opposed to a deal breaker, but be careful around that. You don't have to sign during a retrograde, then try not to, but if you have to, then have some real legal eyes look at it. Um, Mercury likes to travel, like he protects travelers. You may be traveling to your home base, a homeland, going back to a home that you've had before uh, during this time. I know a Libra who's probably doing that, going from Washington State to Palm Springs during this time. And so this is going back to home base, whatever that looks like, another home you've had, a place, you, you know, homeland, another home. Um, Mercury is a ruler of your ninth house of God and book publishing, but he's also, and all the other things, but he's all, but we're not going to talk about it because he's not seeing it very clearly from the fourth house, but he can also witness very clearly your 12th house. So his retrograde may influence your 12th house stories, which is to do with your addictions and your habits and self undoing the weed, the nicotine, the wine, the beer, whatever it is, you know, your own sabotaging self undoing. It's also a place where you can capitalize on revenue from four and lands, but it's also a place where you can sort of set in goal in, in motion an accomplishment that you're doing from behind the scenes. Like no one can see you doing it. Like you're working 
uh, in a backroom mode, right, to accomplish something. So he supports anything to do with meditation, dream work, reverie, um, stillness, ashrams, downtime, uh, recovery and from substance abuse, or even just in rehab, or just even laying off and doing a dry January. <laughs> That's because he's witnessing your 12th in a flowing way from the fourth house. Let's keep going to Scorpio. If you're watching me in the live stream, premiere thing, oh my God, it started to snow and it looks like freezing rain. I got to pick my daughter up today. Um, then don't forget to hit my like button. And if you're not subscribed, that helps as well. Please think of subscribing. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate all the support I have from my regular crew. Shout outs to some of them. One Wise Lady, um, Twisted Art Lady, uh, the Feral Writer who just won a contest with me, Jupiter, the, Stephen the Jupiterian, L.A. Taylor, Misbehaving. It's all the crew. Um, Kate, Kelly K, one of my favorites, who's always so generous with her, her stickers and love ups financially with me. Thank you. Um, you know, there's so many of you guys, Pretty Dark, who's in and out sometimes. I just saw somebody come back I hadn't seen for a long time. I can't remember who in my chat box. So welcome uh, in, your, in the live uh, chat with me. Please hit my like button. It's so great. Um, I've had three regulars, L.A. Taylor, Stephen the Jupiterian, and a newbie, the Feral Writer, all win contest with me recently because every now and then I have a flash contest so uh, when you subscribe you'll know there's a flash contest all you do be is show up in the chat and you go into a hat and I draw and everyone doesn't believe me but I actually draw it from a hat where's my hat there's a real hat it's a toque <laughs> just when you want to show the, the draw hat it doesn't appear to be in any place near me anyway it's a it's like a toque you would wear if you were camouflage <laughs> anyway all right let's keep going my poor sister is time stamping this. This is the official Scorpio sun, moon, but most accurately your rising sign. Everyone check my description box for that tutorial and all that stuff on how to do this whole sign house rising sign free software for yourself. Um, well, first of all, you know, Capricorn is your third house of siblings, your extended family, your childhood friends, like aunts, uncles, nieces, trips and travel, skills-based learning, education, your online and virtual neighborhood, and your real neighborhood that you live in. And it's also a place where we take those trips more domestically, or if I didn't say that, or shorter trips and travel. Um, for a lot of Scorpios, there may be a lot of activation during the retrograde to see a sibling again that you haven't seen news and communications with and from your sibling or extended family. You may also be taking a journey somewhere uh, or planning that journey during this retrograde of December the 29th to the 13th of the month. But go back for the deeper dive. I keep forgetting to tell everybody, remember that back in 2015, December, what was going on in your life into January of 2016. That's the last time Mercury was in Capricorn for a total two months because it's an elemental earth year back then and it's back again. Hope you watched the intro. So what kinds of sibling things were going on? What kinds of journeys and travel were going on? What kind of things were you learning? It's educational house or teaching if you're the teacher. And you make it reconnect with childhood friends out of the blue. You hear from your old high school buddies or somebody comes back to you. Uh, it wouldn't that surprise me. Um, here is protection for travel. If you want to travel, even just commute, um, you're going to have Mercury, the protection god here, all the way through until February 11th. But I'm just saying, uh, during the retrograde, travel will be to a place you have traveled to before, or a journey you have taken before. Okay. Um, and if you're a writer and you want to write something, Mercury here helps you write. My son's a Scorpio rising songwriter. You might get down with the muse. You might revise an old piece of writing that you've done before and try to fix it and fix it up. So it's really great. I'm shedding and I look like a mess. So keep that in mind. Uh, Mercury also owns two other houses in your chart, your eighth house of inheritance monies and your 11th house of good spirit, which is great gains from your career, long range visions and goals for your life, maybe an eldest sibling, also the connection to your um, the uh, kind of a, a windfall or great gains successes from your career, second from the 10th, so, you know, big, big chunks of gains like promotions, raises, you know, celebrity even. So your 11th house gets some love from this retrograde Mercury and just from Mercury being in your third house, you know, December 6th to February 11th. And so there's a sense that you're going to find that there's a possibility of things coming to you in, a, in like a, a promotion or a raise that'll let you take a trip or a sense of uh, 
fruition of a longer held dream, but you had to go back over some old ground in order to make it real. So, you know, you revise the song and then you actually get a favor from a friend to pitch it to a producer or something. Now, the favor from the friend is simple. It's because your 11th house can be your benefactors and allies. I mean, the super karmically rewarding, super supportive folks in your life. I just felt like doing that. This is Boomstick for elder people makeup product. No, I'm not a sponsor. <laughs> hey, that like looks good actually. But it's very moisturizing and my lips felt dry <clears throat> from talking. Okay. Anything else, Scorpio? You got a lot of me in, in this one. I apologize. Oh. Uh, well, I'm gonna just for you point to, out to the fact that. Mercury is in a trine to your marriage house and you've been going through eclipses there and it's been destabilizing your primary significant business and marriage partnership. All right. Tell me it's not true. You've been destabilized, but Mercury is supporting a stabilization, not just when he's retrograde. This could be new conversations with your spouse or, you know, long-term partner, but it could be like, we need to get away together. We need to take a trip. We need to talk. We need to communicate better. We need to discuss this thing in more depth. But it can fortify and strengthen that relationship and be a bit of a bomb for the eclipses that have been jolting through there. And you only have one last eclipse in Taurus, really, in the marriage house itself, which is down the pipeline in October of 23. And it's partial, so it's not the biggest deal. The worst of the marriage destabilizing eclipses are, is behind you, which was November 8th. And um, you'll ride that one out till September, <laughs> October, and then it's done. Okay, but good, best of luck to Scorpios in the world. Um, if you don't have a marriage partner, then it's your business partner or your clients and audiences that are the gnarly zone of your sky. Okay. I think of people, I don't not marry them. I don't have a sibling or whatever. Well, we'll work it out. There's many meetings for each house. <laughs> like, sorry. I love your comments guys, because I get the most intelligent comments from most of you, like completely intelligent, really good questions. But then, and I reply to everybody, but every now and then I get these kinds of like defensive, irritable people as, you know, it's not a comment, really. It's a veiled, a veiled threat. <laughs> um, moving on. If you're watching the live premiere and you haven't hit my like button or ever subscribed, consider doing both. That is so helpful. It really makes a difference in whether this channel is a sustainable source of business revenue and my uh, career. All right. So Sagittarius, fiery people, sun, moon, and rising. The Capricorn place, which last happened as an elemental earth story in December of 15 through to January 16, is a money and earnings house. So when I go back and think about my Sag son, ex-husband, it was when he got a new job. Uh, he already got, had gotten the job, but he was getting a promotion at that time. So you may find that with Mercury's here from December, the 29th, well, the retro is December 29th to January 19th, but he's there all through December 6th to February 11th. So it's a big, long story with a retrograde in the middle that you're doing some kind of negotiation around your possessions, your finances, and your resources, and communications, conversations, documents, signed uh, discussions had Mercury. Um, try to avoid signing anything till after he goes direct on the 19th. But the point is, is that's a focal point. You've been here before. The whole point of an elemental earth here is going to up-level a lot of sages regarding finances, resources, work, and career path and purpose in the world. And so as this is ongoing, you may be uh, going back over old ground, an old employer, an old you know, conversation about your work is coming back at you. And I'm wondering for my ex-husband who thinks he's retiring to Portugal, if he's going to be lured back by one of his people in his company he works for with, you know, to come back and just do a project, do a, do a small thing. What do you call it? Consult for us. <laughs> so, but it's going to be good for your finances. And Venus is there with Pluto, which is a wealth yoga. So it could be definitely a wealth upgrade. It's not a lottery win, uh, FYI. It's more something, I don't think anyway, something to do with, your work uh, and work environment and job and job environment. Now, Mercury owns two pieces of real estate for you, you know, in your sky. He owns your Gemini seventh house of marriage partners, but he can't see it from here in your second house. So I don't think it's really about that, but he does own your 10th house. And that's your career space, your reputation, your status in the world. He's loving that up. He's in a uh, inferior looking over shoulder, trying to your 10th house. He's going over his back over shoulder and going, that reputation, that career. Let's go back over some retrograde ground. Let's look deep more deeply. Let's communicate with others about 
like how, how do we want ourselves to look in the world? How will you just, you know, that thing, I'm married, divorced, single, widowed, widower, retired. Those are descriptions of a status. And, and Mercury's revising that right now. He's going back. He's going back on something. He's changing his mind. So some of you might change your mind on those sorts of statuses that may be in your life. But also, you know, he's flowing in a trine to your sixth house of work where he will be later in the summer. And that's going to be great for you. So it's definitely amplifying uh, opportunities around job work, but also tenancies and rentals. And so in the possessions house and in the money house, uh, trining uh, your uh Uranus and you're sick, some of you could get the best lease possible or rent a place out to the best tenant possible or have a really great opportunity to buy the best pet possible. <laughs> all right, those are all kind of cool stories that can happen here. So let's keep going. Moving on to the next sign, which is Capricorn. Capricorn, Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign. If I don't talk about me, we'll get through this. It's all about you. You have Pluto in the house of you since 2008. You've been transforming, regenerating, renewing, dying and being born again and again. And then on top of that, this is Mercury here. And Mercury in an elemental earth energy back in December of 15 to January of 16, you've been here before. It's back again. So my Capricorn rising ex-husband was uh, in a job that he started about a year earlier and was getting it upgraded, you know, into a greater level of power. And so what kind of power can you be upgraded into in your own life, Pluto power in your first house, Mercury going back to negotiate, renegotiate, re reconsider. Now Mercury's in the house of you. So what are you reconsidering? What are you rethinking? What are you reversing your thoughts, changing your mind on basically to do with your power in this world uh, and your, your potency wealth, how much wealth you have in this world as well, especially with Venus Pluto creating a wealth union here. So a lot of the questions will be about resources and wealth and, and power, and you're going to revise something here. And by January 19th, you'll know what I mean. A lot of Cappies will be going, oh yeah, I changed my mind on something. Um, I am not doing X, Y, Z. Um, I'm not going to retire to Portugal or I'm not going to just whatever. Um, he also owns your sixth house of health and health and work routines. Not really going to spend much time there because he can't see it from Capricorn is in an aversion, but he also owns your ninth house of foreign shores and foreign lands. Now, if you're looking at foreign lands and foreign shores stuff, um, this is going to be flow and ease from the house of you. So you could change your mind on a property you were going to buy or rent. You could change your mind about going to a foreign land and moving to a foreign land. You could change your mind about the legal matters that you were going to proceed with. You could change your mind about getting that visa. You could change your mind about the book you thought you'd write. You could change your mind about that course, you, academic course you were going to enroll in. I'm giving you a bunch of ninth house means. You could change your mind about that relationship with your father. And in some traditions, the ninth house can be the house of the third marriage. There are different Indian traditions for assessing which marriage is a first and second and third. So I know that people corrected me on this. I'm using a particular tradition, which puts a second marriage in the second house and the third marriage in the ninth. Are you going back over some considerations with about a third marriage partnership? You know, it looks like with Mars in your sixth house, by the way, which is Gem his Gemini space that Mercury owns, I'll just ca caution you to be careful around your health and to take appropriate ca cautions around uh, injuring yourself because um, Mars is still retrograde until January 12th. I just want to point that out. But anyway, for the most part, I think you're doing fine. The only thing I might add to that is Mercury retrograde could be going back over something with your body to fix a problem that you thought you'd fix and you have to do some more work on that. All right. Right. <laughs> Here we are. I'm an Aquarius rising. It's still not pitch black here. I'm not doing too bad. Look, um, it's 251. All right. So Aquarius, Aquarius rising, sun, moon, rising always most accurate. Um, this is a 12th house passage. This is like the house of hospitals. I gave myself as an example in the beginning. My um, father, my children ended up in a hospital in a coma during the last time this elemental earth thing happened in December of 15 into January 16. It also began the end of a marriage with my second husband. And by the end of the elemental earth year of 2016, I had moved out and was on my own. Now, all of my relationships end well. I have dinners and and, and go out with and friend, befriend the spouses and partners and you know, the children uh, that they have maybe having with other people, like this is not, I'm not that person who ever speaks badly of anybody I've been with. Um, I always re recognize the value of what lessons I learned with each partner. 
And I'm saying this because, you know, for us, sometimes the 12th house is our self undoing and our, our, our strategy, strategic patterns that don't work. Like we get landlocked here from ancestral and karmic patterns uh, and beliefs. And so now with Mercury retrograde, we might go back and revise something. There may be something to do with, well, certainly you can go back and detox or <laughs> like I'll be doing another dry January. I mean, you could definitely go into a mode of saying, I'm going to kick this habit, especially with Pluto Venus leaving your 12th for, and that's going to also help. Um, but you may also decide that you want to revise your perception of something. So for example, if you're trying to quit an alcohol or wine, for me, it's just, I love wine. And I, I go on big, long breaks of 40 days or six weeks. It's not like I don't stop. I, I can stop drinking wine. I just love it with my dinner. And I keep thinking I shouldn't, who knows? I want to write the book called The Wine Lover's Middle Way. And wouldn't that be a hoot? That all I'm going to do this time is revise my conceptions of wine. But also remember that the 12th house may not be also about you you could have somebody in the hospital, somebody sick, Venus, Pluto, Mercury are all here, son, a father, father figure, patriarchal figure, a female, a powerful female in your life. Um, all of these things mean that somebody may be ill and you may be attending to the situation, not to worry you, right? During this time frame, or somebody you know is going into rehab and you're supporting them, that kind of thing. So this is a story that's going on. And uh, when I say female or a father, father figure, I mean, I don't mean your children, FYI. Uh, none of these indicators are about children. Although Mercury does rule your house of children, uh, but he cannot see it from the 12. So you could say that maybe you're going to revise something with a child, but it's really back end and it's your own inner work that you're doing regarding a relationship with a child. Um, if you want to go off on a pilgrimage, you know, or you want to go to a place of spiritual retreat, or you just want to retreat within yourself with a stellium here. I mean, guys, it's Hygieia, the sun, Mercury, Pluto, and Venus are all clustered in your 12th house. This is like the loner of all time transit, like give, get, get me to the ashram. And I'm telling you, I'm down. I'm moving to my new place on January 13th, and I'm going to make it a temple. I'm just going to be alone for a while. Mm hmm because my daughter's sharing the space here and my girlfriend, I've been living with her while I wait for my rental to be available. So I haven't had any alone time for a long time, real alone time. And I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, but there's revision, rethinking, Mercury going backwards around things to do with alone, alone time, habits, addiction, self-sabotage, et cetera. Hidden enemies are here, but be careful. Just watch it. You don't tell, you know, a secret to someone who spills it on you because they don't really like you or you don't like put faith in someone who doesn't have your back. Mercury retrograde is very powerful. He may help you see who those people are that you don't want to believe in trusting them or believe that they like you or have your back. And uh, lastly, um, Mercury is the owner of your fourth house of real estate and your eighth house of, sorry, owner of your fifth house of children and the, your eighth house of property, money, sorry, money, mortgages, bank loans, debts, taxes, inheritances, money that you can get from your business partnerships, shared resources. So with Mercury retrograde and activating between the 29th of January and the 19th, 20th of December, January 2019th, 20th of December to January 29th, you may go back over something to do with resources shared or money investments that are stuck somewhere and trying to negotiate them into your space and get what you deserve or something, or uh, working on credit card debt re relief or something. Sometimes, I mean, literally, I don't know what to say with that. This one's kind of tricky, but um, you know, there may be some money that was lost or hidden from view for a while. And Mercury now going to show you where, where's the money that you can claim or get your, get your fair share of just, just possibilities. If you're in the middle of spousal separation and negotiating a deal, this is good for you to work in the back end, to do backroom negotiations and deals with people like maybe your husband or wife in order to for, forestall <laughs> at getting gnarly. Okay. Um, I think that's it. I, I, it's really a quiet time for us, Aquarius Risings. I mean, this is a very dream messenger. Keep a dream journal by your bed. He's in your 12th house. This is where your dreams can be profound. Your insights and reveries and meditations can be over the top during his retrograde. Okay, first and always first, the Pisces sun, moon, and rising sign people. And what's going on? I got Harris Frizzy. What's going on here? Well, 
you're having a Mercury retrograde and also at the beginning of an elemental earth year, kickstarting in your 11th house of good spirit. This is your eldest sibling, friends and allies, people who want to benefit you, great gains from your career, windfalls, pennies from heaven, general all-purpose luck and goodness can happen in the 11th house. It's normally a place of good things. And so even when Mercury retrogrades and we might get a, like a miscommunication with an eldest sibling or you know something like that, or with a friend or an ally or with a group of belonging, you're knowing it's all gonna work out. In fact, Jupiter finds his joy in this house in the ancient tradition, and he's actually in your earnings house. So that could be good for money because pennies from heaven or windfalls or great gains from your career, Pisces are connecting to Jupiter in your money and possessions house. Now, Mercury retrograde could be hearing from an old friend or someone in a community you used to belong to or from your eldest sibling that you haven't heard from, from in a long while and getting some news from them that's really good for you to hear. And also you may find that because Mercury is the ruler of your um, seventh house of marriage, spouse, significant other, business partner, audience and clients, one thing is your partner may be also activating some kind of um, financial windfall or goodness in their story that you're benefiting from, especially with Venus Pluto squaring the house of inheritance. And how are you gonna benefit from their inheritance? I mean, possibly that's what I'm seeing. Um, and it's my daughter wanting a ride. The other thing is, is that you could also maybe with the, four, with the fourth house being an aversion, it's not the main story, but some of what's going on now, you're going back over old ground or negotiating or getting friends favors and maybe able to sibling help regarding property, home, land, and real estate. Those themes could be emerging. Nothing will really happen with those themes dramatically until Mars goes direct in your fourth house after January 12th. I really do think with Mercury able to look over his shoulder at your seventh house of spouse, marriage partner kind of thing, that a lot of this is involving that kind of person in what looks like a financial prosperity upgrade storyline. It's a good time to get back in touch with people you've lost touch with, or they'll get back in touch with you, especially friends that are more on the social networks, larger groups of belonging, right? Not your daily, uh, not your childhood friends. And garlic and bacon. I need to tell my daughter, garlic, bacon. All right, that's it. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you're in my chat still, please hit the like button. It's ice. It's an ice storm. I'm going to go pick up my daughter. I'm going to drive carefully. Big hugs to all. Please have a safe solstice. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas. Bye, everyone. <laughs> and meeting for all.